I have wanted to do this Ask Him forever. I am Emily, this is Rachel Ragsdale. We are at Denver Sports Recovery and she is a neuro performance expert and I cannot wait to talk to you. It's been a long time for an Ask Him and I'm so glad you're with me, enjoy. Okay, Rachel, I have wanted to do this since I met you, which was a while ago. Tell me what you do, your title, what do you call yourself, and let's just start there. So my name is Rachel Ragsdale. I am a neurofeedback therapist. I'm also a licensed professional counselor, board certified, and yeah, my specialty would be um, QEG, so brain mapping, and then actual neurofeedback. I love that. So. You guys, some of you guys know, I've had multiple concussions. Um, brain trauma, I think, has helped, not helped, but has developed, has been a big part of my life. I think it's tied into a lot of my gut issues. And when I found Rachel, I was just fascinated because she also believes in this very holistic approach, that it's not just one thing. And so who comes to you and what kind of clients do you see? Like who could benefit from neurofeedback? Yeah, so neurofeedback is awesome for anybody Suffering from anxiety, depression, mood disorders, obviously concussion and all of the symptomology that comes with that, headaches, sleep disorders, mood as well. Um, a lot of people will search things out such as neurofeedback when they're looking for an alternative to uh, psych meds basically, pharmaceuticals. And so um, more and more research is coming out on the harm that pharmaceutical yes. and the pharmaceutical industry is doing, unfortunately. And so people are starting to try to look for natural ways to help themselves feel better. And yeah, that would totally be the answer. This is so needed. You're in a space that's so needed. And I just think it's fascinating what you're doing. So when it comes to, when someone comes to you with anxiety, sleep disorders, um, they're maybe on or off antidepressants. It's something that it's been a long-term thing for them. What are three things that you feel like are important for them to kind of tap into? What are three steps that they can take if they come to you and say, I am helpless, I don't know what to do, this is this thing, these are my symptoms, where do I start? Yep, and that sounds what, like what most, <laughs> most people sound like coming. First, we'll do the free consult. I want to find out, you know, what's going on in their life. There, we'll do a full client history and see exactly what's going on. Second step would be getting the actual brain map done, like you've had before where we put the cap on your head, pick up brain waves from the surface of your head, and then we put that into an actual readable brain map. I can't we're, wait to show them that. That's going to be really cool for you guys to see. So we're measuring the exact organ that we're about to treat, which is a step that a lot of people miss. That way we can tell areas of under or over activity. It's After kind of like um, when people are trying to start working out and they don't do like an initial test workout. Same thing. Like how do you know how you can get better unless you know where you're starting? Exactly. I see that a lot with my NTP clients. It's like, what is your, you know, we know we feel sick or we know we feel off, but to get tangible results, I think mm -hmm. is so valuable because yes. people might feel better, but they undervalue how much better they're feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really cool thing. I can't wait for you guys to see. Huge, huge. So that's one, that neurofeedback. Yep. So once we do that is, and then as you were asking about kind of three main things, we get the analysis done and I'm able to talk to people, which is usually a visual form of grace and hope for people. It's like, oh, this is why I haven't felt good. Oh yeah. my gosh. And it's like, okay, well, you don't have to stay here. We can actually get you in a better brain health scenario. Yeah. So then we discuss huge with just nutritional therapy. Someone like yourself, um, we'll get them on board, do the neurofeedback. So me and my team of a couple uh, technicians will actually perform the neurofeedback, which we'll, we can talk about. Um, extensively, mm -hmm. but it's basically brain training or brain therapy. And then number three, just making sure that you are living a balanced life that involves working out, making sure you're getting enough vitamin D here in beautiful Colorado. Yeah. Um, you know, cutting out just areas in your life that don't necessarily bring you joy or bring you health. So making sure yes. holistic 
Like, Love it, Rachel. What's going on? <laughs> it's so true. You're preaching. To, that's so good. People miss this third piece so much. Yes. Um, I'm really excited because I think what for you personally, what do you? How important is nutrition with your clients? Huge. So if someone comes to me and I can see their brains, right? So you can't fool me, right? If your yeah. brain's learning and doing exactly what we're asking it to, and I can see that on the screen, and then you still still are reporting, I don't know, I'm just really tired there'll be a disconnect and I'll be able to start to pick up, up on that and like, yeah. what is that about? So just kind of tapping into that with the client. Usually it is something in their diet as simple as, okay, you're not drinking enough water mm-hmm. or wow, like maybe magnesium's missing. Yeah. That's your role where you can figure that out. You're, that's your expertise. So um, yeah, whenever you start to figure out like, okay, putting pieces together, people start yeah. to feel so much better, so much faster. And I agree. With it's that. awesome. And I'm excited to talk more about food allergies in the brain and how huge. big of an impact that was huge for me in depression and anxiety. So let's actually start and show them the brain map okay. and break that down. Cool. Cool. Follow me. Okay. So brain mapping, that's what you're going to show me. And I've tried to tell people about it. And that's why we're doing this video because it's really hard to explain. Wouldn't you say it's like kind of crazy. Um, so I want Rachel to break it down. How did you get into this? So I got into a personal experience. I was actually diagnosed bipolar when I was uh, 16 or 17. I was literally crazy. I would go to jail, get out of jail, be great one day, just see like your typical bipolar disorder. And my parents were like, what are you, do you just not understand what you're doing? Um, So it was either two options. If I wanted to go to college, I could either go get on meds or I could go do this neurofeedback thing or brain training. And for some weird reason, I don't know if I was just going against the grain again, but I was like, I'm not going to be on med. So I ended up going, I did 40 sessions of neurofeedback, which is pretty standard in the field. It sounds like a lot, but you're retraining your neural pathways and it takes time. Yeah. Um, I did 40 sessions in pretty much six weeks. And I can now say I once was bipolar. My brain map shows absolutely not one sign of a pattern of bipolar disorder. So, so your brain cool. map, the brain maps that you do with people can actually show those waves. So talk to me a little bit about that waves and if we, yeah, like. I usually know. take a long time to explain these to people. So usually when they come in, we go through it for a while, but just very quickly, underactivity would be the darker colors, overactivity would be the warmer colors. This is a pattern of TBI or concussion where you have global underactivity. Um, we see that a lot with thyroid and Um, metabolic issues as well and then there's just a lot of alpha which we're not going to talk today maybe we can do it another day but alpha is one of the patterns that we see too much alpha production when someone's had a TBI whereas another one that's more anxiety provoking you'll see the stark difference here would be way too much overactivity tons and tons and tons of fast wave not enough ability to slow down so these are what show me patterns and literally give me a map into the treatment that I'm going to do. That's so awesome. So the treatment, and I want you guys to see it live because I think you're going to just use my brain. Um, I, it really is this process of retraining, what you said, retraining those waves. And so you use it by giving positive feedback. Mm-hmm. And so holding a ball that vibrates, which you guys will see some music, looking at a screen, kind of like a video game. It's like a video game. And it takes how long? 30 minutes. Yeah, awesome. And you've seen great results with it. That's so cool. Okay, so let's show that. Okay, so what I do is I put these electrodes and I take some gel and I'm actually going to connect these electrodes to the scalp of Emily. Basically, these electrodes pick up the brain waves on the surface of her head. There's nothing being inputted into her brain. It's all outputted. And once her brain basically reaches levels that I'm asking it to reach, she is going to get a reward just as she explained so nicely. (laughs) Auditory, visual, and tactile rewards. That's the way the brain learns, just like any muscle in our body. And you literally are going to be doing mental reps. And so what we're going to do is get Emily to the point where it's not too hard, but it's not too easy, just like when she's working Exercise. out, yep, yeah. she has to find a weight that, you know, okay, if I want to do six to eight reps, well, this is the weight range that I'm going to be looking at. If I want to PR, well, here's, you know, my next number. That's exactly what we do in here, just on a different level. And then if you want to grab that baseball with your left hand. Got it. So you're about to see her brain waves come up live. I'll just put them over there. 
So these are Emily's lovely brain waves. <laughs> Go ahead for me and you kind of are doing it laughing or clench, clench your jaw all the way. So that would be muscle tension. Now just try to really relax your jaw and imagine all those peaks to go nice and still. Calm them down a little bit. Go into your yoga mentality. I don't know if I have that, Rachel. Huh? <laughs> so Emily has a very, she has a more overactive brain. Does not surprise me when she's such a go-getter and, um, you know, extrovert. And she has a more of a loud, captivating personality. She also has more captivating brain waves. When you see a lot less of those peaks, that means that the brain has more of an underactivity. So you might have a more chill type personality. Um, so this is what I look at. And then I direct Emily to do a series of mental tests for me. This ball vibrates. It's really fun. <laughs> Does this have a name, Rachel? We should name People it. call it like neuro bear. <laughs> neuro bear. Oh. oh so man. this would be the plane. Emily's in control of three things. This, how much smoke comes out of the back of the plane, making sure that it doesn't run into the walls, um, and then the speed of the plane. And all of that would be synced up with the auditory feedback. We don't have the headphones on her, but the music will get louder and increase, and the smoke volume will increase when she's doing a good job or basically getting her waves that we saw on the screen more regulated. So you're trying to regulate brain waves. And there's all sorts of series of games that people can play. This is just one of them. Um, but yeah, that's what the actual feedback looks like. So the 40 sessions you did were just like this. Pretty similar. Mm -hmm. So then how do you decide, you know, what, because the this is controlled by the waves you set, correct, for each client? Yes. So you are just looking at their original map and knowing they need to obviously have more waves, less waves. Um, that's kind of how you choose that pathway for them, correct? Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Rachel, my brain feels so zen. <laughs> so that was one piece. Um, you know, when you go to a doctor and you have brain issues or if you have anxiety or whatever we have been talking about, they say rest and, or they give you medication. And it's like, God, there's such a place for this. Nothing against doctors and not all doctors, but I just am so grateful that you are doing this kind of work. Yeah. What other alternatives, whether it's post-concussion or, you know, the symptoms we've talked about, what other methods do you like to recommend or do you suggest? There's so much technology out there to help people heal their brain. Yes. It's very exciting, exciting stuff. I would say in addition to what we've already talked about, the neurofeedback, nutrition, and just living a balanced, healthy lifestyle and working out, which is huge. It's a whole other so thing that you already mm -hmm. know about. We also have the gyro stem at NeuroPerformance. We do near infrared light therapy. We have a DynaVision board, which helps basically get all your brain to work together um, in a hyperbaric chamber. Those are some of the other fun modalities that people can utilize here. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people too have just talked about brain exercises. A lot of people, does luminosity work? Does luminosity work? Luminosity is not going to hurt your brain. You're doing some sort of exercise. That's yeah. just my opinion. So rest is a little bit more of the old school, mm -hmm. old school way of healing the brain. I Agreed. wouldn't personally recommend that. You have to fire new pathways. Like this whole thing got re fired up for me because I did that brain seminar that we talked about from Apex and I was just so blown away about the treatment they were doing when you fire new pathways and you do things like neurofeedback or even just stimulus and exercise can be a huge stimulus that's when your brain starts to have this neuroplasticity and that's when you start to heal and create those things that you need to create so that's so awesome yeah. and just briefly you guys know I've, if you haven't heard me talk about food food allergies are huge for this huge. when you have this up, basically if you're more inflamed and that can come from gut inflammation or allergies or cytokines whatever it's coming from if your gut is inflamed your brain is inflamed if your body is in stress your brain is inflamed you have to look at all the stressors in your life in order to start healing so that's really where nutritional therapy comes in so watch more videos that I've done in the past awesome how do they find somebody like you if they're not in Colorado or what's your contact? How can we get people to start getting more aware of this kind of stuff? Yes, there is a master website that I highly recommend you to use if you're watching from anywhere other than Denver. BCIA.org or EEG, EEG info dot 
Com, I think. And you go on there and you click on find a practitioner and then you can put in your zip code and you can find people that are BCN or perform neurofeedback. I also told Emily you're more than happy to contact her or me personally and I can help direct you in the right way. I just am very passionate about getting more people out there helped and not having them feel completely trapped to some of the Western medicine that we yeah push yeah. down their throat. And there's so many people that feel so lost and feel so helpless and I just feel like no, okay. God it can be helped mm -hmm. and you're not alone. A lot of us have struggled with depression and anxiety and you're being not off. alone. No. We're all kind of in the same boat and there's ways that you can heal and it's so different than just an antidepressant. Yes. So I think this is awesome work you're doing. I'm so glad we finally didn't ask Me him. Too. And stay in touch if you guys want more. Maybe we will do even a gyro stim, ask him. You definitely want to see Emily in here. <laughs> I can tell you that much. <laughs> I should use, I could definitely use it. Thank you again for doing Thank this. You. This is great. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.